Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to do another exercise with pufferfish, and uh, we're going to look into mesh mirror cutting. So uh, I've downloaded the example file from uh, the pufferfish library, and uh, I'm first going to show you what uh, mirror cut meshes are, and then we're going to do some uh, cool application. I'm going to um, try to use this tool uh, to develop um, kind of a um, nice dynamic connecting form that we can parameterize some of its uh, connections. Um, so here you're seeing the example file. So I'm going to first walk you through some of the basics of how to approach um, the mirror cut or understand it. So we start with a mesh box that is uh, made out of, let me actually um, disable uh, the preview. Let's see, I think we can also hide no, let's see the mirror, mirror the plane. But this is the mesh box, and then we move it to this location. And what we do is actually find a centroid uh, in the middle of it, and then place a rotated plane. And that plane is actually displayed here. So this is this is that plane, and we use this plane to um, mirror cut this mesh. So what happens is. We, uh, we cut this form along this plane and then we mirror it on the other side and then um, form this connection with it as well. So it's, it's kind of a symmetrical way of constructing connected, connected meshes. And if you look at this tool, this is the pufferfish tool for mirror cut mesh. It basically controls how much uh, we want this bridge to be formed, if we want to offset the um, mesh geometries you can see if we set it to zero then the mesh boxes are pretty much kept uniform but if we create an offset then they're distorted and then we can also con con uh, control the connection type and the bulge so we can also make the connection a bit more wider or smaller and we can also control if we want to uh, join the mirrors or uh, flip uh, I think this controls the flipping directions. Let, let me see. If you want to flip the mirror direction, if you flip it, then you're basically left with nothing, right? So we are placing this mirror. We want to preserve this part of the mesh so that we don't want to flip it. And then if you want to join or not. So most of the time you want to join and uh, you can smooth out the resulting form and you would get, uh, let's actually bake this. So you would get kind of a connected topology like this, right? So um, two mesh boxes will be connected. Now let's try to use some of these tools and um, uh, make make an interesting mirror cut mesh. So I'm going to start with a mesh box uh, here. What I want to do is essentially um, create like a vertical form that has four legs at the bottom and on top. And we're going to use the, um, the axes um, the coordinate systems planes uh, for mirror cut functions later on but the first mirror cut we can actually make it um, using this type of rotated plane um, so first thing I want to do is uh, create a mesh box that is offset from the origin of the coordinate system so we can do that by um, let's start with constructing a plane so we can do construct point and then move this point to a location Let's say we move it diagonally 20 by 20. So this is going to be the center for our construction. So I place an XY plane there. And I'm going to actually hide this so that we don't get confused. And we want to place a rectangle there. So let's look at the section of our mesh box. So this is the plane. And we can construct a domain here. So we can make this also symmetric. So let's say we want the thickness of the mesh box to be five. Then we can start from let's say zero to five and put these in for X and Y. And we can actually control the location of this box along this diagonal. Um, then we can do a mesh box. So there are multiple ways of creating mesh boxes. Um, so the mesh box tool actually takes in another box and you can define the resolution for the face count. So what happens is if you have um, a unit 
a mesh, then those faces could be subdivided. So that subdivision, if you bake this, you can see um, these faces are divided into uh, into a grid, right? So we we can specify how many faces we want along this mesh box. And the more faces you have, I think this um, this mirror cut mesh works better because it also calculates how you want to connect them. So it calculates this neck. So the, the more meshes you have, the mesh faces you have, then uh, I think it's a smoother connection. Um, so maybe we can first do a box. So we can do center box, box to point, box rectangle seems to be the right one because we have a rectangle. So we put that rectangle into R and then we can specify some height. So let's say that height is, um, it could be 30. Right, and I want to turn this into a mesh box and we can control the face count vertically to be 30 as well. So if I bake this, now you can see that the um, this is our mesh box now that is created as an offset. Um, next step is actually find a rotated plane here to do our first um, mirror cut mesh. So I'm going to hide this portion of the script and then we can actually move this plane to the top. So we can simply do move and I want to move this along the vertical direction using the vertical height value for our box so that that plane is moved all the way on top. Right, so this is our plane now. And then I want to rotate this plane. So we can actually copy this part of um, the pufferfish function. So if I bring this over, rather than using the volume centroid, we can actually use this uh, this moved, um, moved point or moved plane. This is already having actually, um, we cannot actually use this. We need a point. So we can actually move this point rather than the plane itself. So we get a point there. And then we can put an X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z plane to that point. I'm going to delete this. Now the rotating function is uh, basically we want to create two sets of rotation using angles. So the first rotation would rotate this plane along the Y, Z axis. So we place a horizontal plane there and then we want to rotate along the YZ axis. Um, so if, if you put YZ plane, then essentially you're rotating it on this plane. So you're rotating it along the X axis, um, our X axis, right? So that's, that's true. Now this will give you the first rotation. So this angle controls how much we want this plane to rotate along X axis. And this is in degrees. Then we can do the same type of rotation in the X, Z axis. So this will be along the Y axis and that will give us a three dimensional uh, rotation for this plane. So it's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a transformation actually, but we're doing it uh, kind of manually, right? So this would be like that. So I want to set it diagonal because I want to um, create a mirror cut mesh that goes towards the origin because we're going to also use the coordinate system to uh, do more uh, mirror cuts later on. So this seems to be fine. Now I get my mesh box and I have my um, rotated plane. So we can actually start copying this guy as well. So I can just copy this mirror cut function with all its parameters. And this would be the mesh box that we want to mirror cut. And my mirror plane would be the rotated plane. And let's look at the output. So the output is going to be important for our next step. And let's see. So this actually, um, if we do, yeah. So if you flip the mirror, we can actually check if the mirror cut is working fine. Now you can see that it's also doing some offsets. So I'm going to set the offset to be zero so that we can see what's happening. So depending on the alignment of this plane, we're getting a rotated copy of that mesh. So we can actually control that by rotating these planes a bit, right? So what I want to do is make it in such a way that it moves to the origin. So I want it to stay on this diagonal a bit. So this seems to be um, the kind of angle that we want to create. 
and I'm going to move it a bit closer to the origin so let's move it a bit closer like that maybe a bit more far away so let's say six and then we can control the the reach and the bulge so the reach uh, let's play around with that you can see that um, it kind of um, trims some part of the original mesh box to create a connection and then the bulge we can actually make it in a way that this becomes uh, kind of uniform in thickness right so that's kind of the connection I want to achieve um, now the reach we can actually reduce it a bit more so this is kind of the shape the first mirror cut mesh that I have created now the rest is actually uh, a lot easier well easier said than done but um, basically what I want to do is um, do the same type of mirror cut operation three more times to this mesh using the coordinate system so the first one we're going to actually do it on the YZ axis so that we get symmetry um, so I'm going to copy this mirror cut mesh function we can actually copy all of its parameters as well because sometimes we need to customize how this is going to take effect now this is this was the output from the first mirror cut so we put this in and our uh, mirror plane would be the YZ axis first so I put the YZ axis and we can actually do flip mirror uh, to see what the effect is going to be so it's actually working fine it's just the bulge and the reach are making these two forms connected too much so we can reduce uh, some of it, these parameters so rather than bulging we can actually reduce this bulge so we can see um, we can see how that affects the form so there we go so we want the reach to be a bit more uh, less and we want the bulge to be a bit more wider so we get kind of a connection here and uh, the form is tapering quite nicely right so I'm going to hide this guy so that we can see what's happening so that's the first mirror cut mesh now we're going to do this operation a bunch of times so I'm going to make another copy of this mirror cut mesh and this time rather than doing YZ we're going to do XZ so that we get the second symmetry on the second direction and we can actually look at the output of this guy and we can do flip mirror again sorry let's see this one was like this um, what happened let's see oh this is coming from before let's do it like that and there you go so we get kind of uh, a form a single connected form that has four legs now right so that would be um, that's kind of the effect so if I bake this you can see this is the mirror cut mesh form that we are dealing with at the moment now the last operation is I want to set another XZ plane to copy this vertically so that one um, we can actually um, do another copy of this again and use this mesh but the mirror plane we want to put an XY plane that is located at certain height so we can do XYZ point and set some Z parameter here and do the XY plane so this goes here so we can move it down a bit so let's say it's around this height location and this would be the form that I got right so that's those are the results of uh, one two three four mirror cut meshes and the first one controls how we want to connect diagonally so the cool thing is after doing these sorts of symmetrical operations you can uh, visualize the lines of your mesh if you go to mesh analysis uh, face boundaries so we can look at the triangulation or quad uh, distribution and we can then play with these angles so you can see uh, how the connection is changing right so that's the these are controlling the mirror cut functions you can also control how much bulge we want so you can get a lot of cool forms because we also have embedded symmetry now we can also control the offset a bit so we can move these outside a bit more and maybe 
control these angles so towards the other direction towards each other let's move it up there you go so you get connections this way and voila <laughs> so we get we got kind of a genus in it uh, we also got a hole So this needs to be, I think, between, um, let's see, this needs to be between 90 and 150, it seems like. So we get kind of a shape like that. I think, I think this is fine to work with at the moment. So I'm going to stick to that. And I want to show you one more cool thing. So we can actually um, do a few more things to this mesh if you have Weaver Bird tools. So uh, the first thing we want to do is smooth it out and we can do smooth mesh. Uh, I have it copied here, but I can also type it up. So you can do mesh smooth, mesh smooth. So we want to smooth this mesh and we want to do it iteratively. So smooth strength, you can set it to be one. If you want to get maximum, then um, you can skip naked vertices and number of number of successive steps it could be all the way up to any number you want but the more um, successive smoothing you have the rounder the form would get and let's see so if I feed this in now this would be the rounded shape that we have right so if I increase this amount uh, it will get rounder and rounder now let's look at our form after it's smoothed so there you go so that's the mirror cut mesh that we have. Um, I want to do one more thing to this. So the smoothing, I'm not, um, I'm not a huge fan because initially we had a lot of uh, divisions for the mesh. Maybe we can go back and reduce the amounts of the amount of division we had. So uh, let's actually try doing that first. So let's see if um, here we had the mesh box. So rather than doing thirty and the other numbers we can maybe reduce them out a bit so let's say we start with five and five for mesh faces and this one we set it to be 10. so that gives us a lower resolution mesh but it might actually work a lot better when we smooth it out so let's see so after we smooth it out so there you go so it's it's basically a lot rounder the less um, mesh uh, faces you have and you can also play with these angles to create some genuses in there right so you can uh, there you go if I play with these angles I sometimes get the genuses as well so this could be kind of an interesting shape well we got four there <laughs> so let's let's work with this guy two or four you can also uh, move them a bit more wider than each other or closer and so this is kind of a generative part of working with mirror cut meshes right so you can you can play around with the connection types so that seems to be okay for me so that's kind of the shape we got and what I want to do after the smoothing uh, we can actually um, triangulate this first so if you do triangulate so we get um, triangles instead of quads and then what I want to do is use the weaver bird uh, function so I'm going to show you something really cool so if you go to weaver bird and then go to extract you can extract the dual graph of this mesh that will uh, place uh, a hexagonal pattern on top of your mesh and we can actually uh, f like thicken this uh, thicken this form so you can turn it into a form really quickly so you can see that because we have a continuous topology with some genus in it uh, you can also um, make this into a frame and then you can thicken that out as well so I'm going to create a really smooth thickened shell so the first thing is we do the dual uh, then the next next thing is you can do uh, mesh thicken I think that should be 
uh, offset mesh or mesh thicken. I think one of one. Oh no, the first thing is we need to do a picture frame. We reverse picture frame, and this picture frame gives some thickness to that lattice. So that thickness we can also uh, customize here. So let's make it ten. So it could be a lot thicker than we want. Well, the thicker it gets, the smaller the holes would be. And then, uh, so this is what we have right now. So if I bake it, you can see that we have some mesh faces there. We can then do a mesh thicken, or you can straight up uh, loop subdivide this, but you can do a mesh thicken first. So it gives it some thickness. The thickness value could be a bit more smaller. So let's say 0 0.5. There you go. And then we can also do, well, let's bake this and see what it looks like. So this is kind of the thickened shell we have. And then we can do loop subdivision. So let's go to loop subdivision and we smooth out this form. You can do it a bunch of times, so all the way up to two or three. I think three would create a lot of faces. Let's actually reduce this to be two. And we bake it to see the the shape, right? So I think it's a lot better than the um, like the rounded rectangular section. So this is the final shape that I got. You can see um, basically the the mesh. Uh, has this type of continuous topology. Uh, I actually, I don't think I have the shadows on for my display, so let me actually turn them on quickly so that you can understand the shape a bit more. So there you go, you can see that the um, it's, it's kind of a nice uh, lattice that is smoothed out, and you can also achieve these sorts of connected genuses, right? So I think mirror cut mesh is a really powerful tool. You can use it for a lot of generative or form uh, modeling uh, alternatives. And um, it's, you can also create a lot of quick variations with this because, um, because you use planes and you, you can also use symmetry in finding the form you want to make. So um, this was the tutorial for today. So I'm going to recap what we have done. We looked at a mirror cut mesh, um, but basically we created a mesh box with some resolution and we then uh, created four sets of mirror cut mesh, right? So the first thing was kind of a diagonal mirror cut mesh to get kind of a shape that intersects with the origin. And then I did three su uh, successive mirror cuts uh, using the coordinate system planes. Then we smoothed it out and did some beaver bird functions like the mesh tool, uh, frame, thicken, and subdivision uh, to get this uh, type of form. So I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, um, um, I would like it if you subscribe to the channel to see more content. Uh, I'll be uploading more tutorials uh, in the upcoming weeks. And if you have any questions about this tutorial or if you are curious about some other uh, pufferfish or other tools, other grasshopper tools, you can leave comments below. And uh, thanks for watching.